Welcome to Days Are Update for September 8th, 2024. I'm your host, Chris Ologi. I'm Brandon Parkins. And I'm Jan Victoria. And yeah, we've got uh, not a big week of news. Um, this is fairly light, but uh, we do still have some interesting stuff to talk about. Uh, we got some layoffs at a few places, uh, some sales stuff going on, some dates and delays. Mm-hmm. Uh, biggest news I'll talk about here in a bit uh, involving Concord, mm-hmm. but there is uh, some other interesting stuff here. But uh, yeah, before we get to the news, we'll talk about what we've been playing, uh, and I'll kick it off here. I've been playing a bunch of Astrobot. I finished the first two worlds. Mm. Uh, gotten everything in it, I believe. Um, and yeah, it's it's an incredibly tight and polished platformer. Um, I've had a lot of fun so far. Very much feels a lot like what the the other Astrobot games have been. Mm-hmm. Um, a similar premise of the of the ship kind of getting um, parts taken from it by aliens that has oh. caused the the ship to crash on a planet. Mm. And in the process, uh, uh, your Astrobot kind of takes the the dual sense ship to fly around these galaxies to take on these uh, various levels to beat them, and eventually the boss that gets you the uh, one of the parts of the the PS5 returned. Um, mm-hmm. So I've gotten two of those done, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's partly a big platformer as well as a celebration of the uh 30th anniversary of the playstation yep um there's a lot of guest characters in this um i have not unlocked the the point where i can change the astrobots look um i believe that is going to be the next thing i unlock i believe um that's the the stuff you unlock through the uh art pieces that you get uh that will Uh, unlock new things for you to do you know the first one you get is the gotcha machine uh for each of the licensed characters that you have unlocked uh you can spend you know 100 coins to uh pull out essentially like their their setting um uh, the little figurine that then enhances sort of where they hang out on the uh the home base uh, around the ps5 and yeah, that includes a, a lot of Sony properties as well as third party stuff. Uh, and there are a few that are exclusively on that base area. As there's, I think, four areas you unlock as you go through the game. Yeah. Um, and as you collect more of the Astrobots, you get uh, more areas and more things you can do to uh, around there. Um, yeah. Things you unlock and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a it's a very uh, well-made game, very kind of a uh, uh, big game. It feels like um, the maps are relatively about the same size as what was in Astro's Playroom. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe a bit bigger than that in some of them, uh, but you unlock a lot of side uh, levels that are kind of where the the challenge is at because the the main ones are not too hard mm. uh, for anything. But uh, it's where you get to some of these side ones that. It's kind of where you start dealing with uh, the more tricky mechanics that they introduce. Mm. Um, and yeah, in each of the uh, areas, you get uh, one uh, area after you beat the boss that is themed around one of the, the properties they feature. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've done the extra trophies in Astro's Playroom, I believe uh, you get at least some hints of what some of that stuff might be. Mm. Um, so yeah, you also... Uh, Get to see some really cool stuff because they they theme those areas around the the games that they have done. I'm not going to spoil what any of them are, but mm. uh, you get some special items for that stuff as well as just unlocking more licensed characters and yeah, just get to do some overall really cool stuff there. Um, and yeah, it's just a it's a very good game. Uh, mm-hmm. Looking forward to playing some more of this. Uh, definitely one of the best 3D platformers I've played in quite a while. Mm. Uh, so there's that. Um, Oh yeah, that's Astrobot. Uh let's see. Uh also been playing a Star Trucker. This is on Xbox and PC. It is also on Game Pass. It is a space trucking sim. Um where you are sort of a rookie that is sort of starting your your career, I guess. Um doing this stuff. You start uh with an initial like tutorial job 
you kind of learn about how to patch up your ship with uh, when dings happen um, and kind of del- how to deliver your your first uh, trailer of stuff and how that all works and then how to find new jobs, uh, that kind of stuff, mm. uh, which is uh, fairly simple for what it is. Uh, though the, the thing that I think makes this game um, maybe worse off is that it has a bunch of difficulty settings uh, mm. and the normal one ends up being very high maintenance in the way that it is do- designed. So you're uh, dealing a lot with uh, managing batteries for your different systems uh, as well as air filters and some other stuff that you need to um, keep some of these systems going and as well as patching up your ship. It's it's a lot more vulnerable and it felt like I had to uh, spend a lot of time refilling these or, you know, oh. putting these uh, uh, batteries into the slots and then uh, disposing of the the old batteries, which usually you just keep them in a box and sell them when you get to a a merchant. Um, but it felt like every mission you had to place stuff, so you had to be constantly visiting shops to buy more batteries, which they only had a specific amount on hand at, the, at a time. So you're kind of very limited in uh, that, kind of making it a more frantic and uh, tense experience, which is not why I play. Stuff like American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator, oh. um, those are kind of just the the fun of the of the trip and all that. And this does not have that on the default difficulty. Um, you have to go to either the easy or what I did is I started a new save on a custom difficulty, which then lets you uh, check a bunch of the options for the various systems in the game. I turned most of them all the way down so that. It would not be so heavy on the maintenance. Sort of every single, um, every single job I would finish, I would have to go then shop and get batteries and all that stuff. So that makes it a a much more relaxed game mm-hmm. uh, that I think is a better experience. But uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I've done, uh, I think I did a few jobs on the the normal difficulty, and then I restarted, and that's been going better. Um, I've been going to some. Some different places maybe the the other knocks i have is that um the readability of the kind of roads that they have uh set up like they set up basically a series of gates to kind of show you clear paths that don't have debris in them or shouldn't have debris in them oh. and um it's not always easy to read where they're at because uh, the map doesn't show you a map of that specific area you get kind of just an overview map of uh, the different hubs that you can go to. Oh. Um, so that's like a thing like I would have liked a top down view to be like, Oh, this is how I get to this exit versus just, you know, driving straight towards it through the debris and hoping I don't hit anything. Oh. Um, that kind of stuff. But um, I've, I'm figuring some of that stuff out. You kind of need to just drive around a bunch, uh, which then leads to, you know, wasting gas and all that, which is, uh, tougher to do on that normal difficulty that it kind of hints that you should start at. Um, I do recommend playing on the easier difficulties and maybe working your way up, though I also think they should just shouldn't have difficulties and just have those as options for you to set. Oh. Uh, which I kind of find to be a little bit disappointing because, uh, you know, like the, the American and Euro Truck games just don't have difficulties. You just have, oh. they might have preset difficulties like, It'll set all the, the settings to things, but you can change them at any point and make it easier or tougher if you want yeah. uh, for that kind of stuff. But here, that's not as much of a thing. But um, you do have like CB radios. You're hearing, you know, specific characters talking throughout, and you have some points where you can answer. And as you get uh, XP and level up your your license, you can spend them to unlock more types of jobs or. Um, more like harder versions of uh certain types of jobs that kind of stuff and along with that comes uh you know story quests story jobs that uh some of those characters on the the radio will ask you to do Mm -hmm. uh for that so that can be i guess kind of like a tutorial ish kind of thing of them introducing you to these new types of jobs that Mm -hmm. you get uh you unlock so 
that can be pretty neat. Um, there's a radio, but it has a seat. It feels like it has like four or five songs mm. on it. So there's not much variety at all. And there's no internet radio station or anything like that. Maybe the PC version has some, some option for using your own music, but uh, I'm playing on Xbox. So uh, there's nothing but those like four or five songs. So I, they're all pretty good, but not good enough to hear, you know, constantly repeats. Um, so I've turned that off and just listen to whatever else I've got on, you know, Netflix or whatever I'm having on while I'm playing that game. So yeah. um, there's that. And then like the, uh, they make the manual with all the, all the details on how things work yeah. is hidden in a, you know, like a, a glove compartment, but isn't part of the, the menus. It's not like you yeah. can refer to it whenever you're uh, out of your seat. Uh, that's kind of a, an issue. You have to get back into the seat to mess with any of the stuff on your dashboard or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's can, kind of annoying that you can't just like have it on you at all times to refer to. Um, and I guess the other one is that the, the horn is just a specific lever on your mm-hmm. dashboard. Uh, so you can't just hit the horn whenever you're uh, doing stuff. So that's kind of annoying. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of about it. I think the, the other thing is I think you should have the FOV up, uh, higher, uh, than what it's set at. Cause you end up kind of having this tunnel vision of seeing, uh, out of your, uh, dashboard or out of your windows. Um, uh, once you open it up, you can kind of see a little more, uh, to your sides, mm. uh, give you a little better view of what's going on around you. Uh, though you do have cameras side view cameras but there's also those screens have other data that might be interesting to you uh, as well as a backup camera uh, which um, you dock into specific places to go shopping and whatnot Mm -hmm. uh, which is a a little bit tough at first but once you get used to it it's not too bad for that you're just basically having this circle on your camera that then you know as you're backing up closer you're lining it up with the one on the the place you're going to dock with. And then uh, once you're close enough, you hit uh, uh, a switch to uh, patch it. So nothing too complicated, but yeah, it works out pretty well. So yeah, that's Star Trucker. Uh, Pretty good game, but a little rough around the edges that uh, hopefully they maybe do some more updates and fix it up a bit. But uh, yeah, still pretty good for what it is. And that's been... That and uh, the last game I've been playing is Concord. Uh, uh, with the news that is going on, I played uh, a bunch more before it got shut down. Uh, did a stream for that and put a a video up on our YouTube of the archive of that. So mm-hmm. uh, that was fun. Still, though, I kind of wish that they had um, up the XP multiplier, just made it like a hundred times or something like that. Just let people kind of unlock as much of the game as they could if they weren't going to just unlock it all for everybody. Uh, just unlock all the all the cosmetics and such for people, make it easier, and as well as people trying to get the uh, the platinum trophies, uh, which ended up with people going into the round-based mode rivalry uh, and just people were just jumping off the, the sides of the map mm. uh, to their death to end it as fast as possible because that gives out a higher XP than the regular matches. Uh, so that was sort of the the point of the game where that uh, the matchmaking for that mode was working a lot faster than it had ever been because more people wanted in just to try to grind out the platinum trophy as fast as possible, mm-hmm. um, which I didn't get very close to. I'd like eleven or twelve trophies um, it required me to play a ton of it. So yeah, it's a it's a very rare platinum there uh, for people. But uh, yeah, that game was still a lot of fun. Uh, unfortunately. Just did not jive with a lot of people or interest a lot of people, but we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so that's it for me. Brandon, what have you been doing? Well, um, as for me, uh, I have been, I am playing the Kingdom Hearts collection. Specifically, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, and, you know, like I said last time, I had forgotten how long that whole section with Roxas was, but ultimately I kind of, uh, 
kind of learn to appreciate it because the game is kind of trying to catch you up on some of the plot elements that you might have forgotten between the gaps between the first and second games. Um, and there was a considerable one for those who don't know. Uh, but there was also the fact that, um, you know, it was helping you some of the stuff that happened uh, with some of the other, the, the, other Kingdom Hearts game that had come out in the meantime that was on the I think it was on the DS um but uh yeah that game is still a lot of fun uh graphically it still mostly holds up the only issue is and this was actually a thing for when the games were originally released people noticed um Characters in this game essentially have two types of animation cycles. They have the ones that are clearly done through, you know, like actual motion capture animation, and there's like fully animated faces and everything. And then there's the other one that's all pre-programmed where when they're talking, their mouths go through like a preset number of animations. And it's very noticeable, and it's not really an issue except for the fact that there are times when they will switch back and forth between, like, the same scene. So, it can be a little bit off, but right now I have, uh, I already finished uh, Land of the Dragons, you know, that's the Mulan world, I'm now in Beast Castle, and uh, dealing with that. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, um, because of uh, Astrobot came out this week. I decided it was finally time to actually play Astro's Playroom, which is more or less the precursor to that game. And I know it's crazy thinking I would I would have played this by now, considering the thing comes preloaded on every PS5, but I hadn't. <laughs> I had completely ignored it. Um, and then I finally decided to actually start playing it, and I found it incredibly enjoyable and charming and sweet and actually a lot of fun um it's not a terribly big game it's mostly a you know a graphics uh demo more than anything but it is an incredibly well-made one and it kind of functions as like a sort of playable museum of the sony playstation through its entire history um and so yeah that uh that is a lot of fun highly recommend you know, anyone who has had that on their PS5 and has not messed with it to just give it a shot because it is incredibly fun. Um, and I'm almost certainly going to get the actual Astrobot game as soon as I'm, you know, done with that. But uh, and on top of all that, I'm also still pecking away at the DLC for CrossCode. I'm actually in the main dungeon for the DLC, which is not easy at, like, anything. It's considerably more difficult than a lot of the other dungeons I've come across. Um, but, yeah, that's about it for me. Uh, so, Dan Reb, what about you? Yeah, it's going to be a bunch of stuff uh, from me, um, but the game that I played most of the time last week, which I didn't really talk about, was um, Ace Attorney Investigations Collection. Um, so, yeah, the the review is uh, up on Smashpad. I uh, gave it a 4 out of 5. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so the thing about this collection is that uh, it pretty much completes all of the Ace Attorney uh, collection as far as like being able to buy it on a modern platform. You know, last mm -hmm. year uh, the 3DS eShop um, closed down, which caused pretty much like um, people to, you know, if, if you didn't already have the um, Ace Attorney games, uh, if you didn't get it there, then there's no way else you could have gotten them. So. Uh, now that they've released uh, the original trilogy a few years ago, um, they released uh, um, the Great Ace Attorney um, Chronicles uh, two years ago, and then um, earlier this year they released uh, the, the Apollo Justice Collection. Um, these were the last two left. Uh, granted, there's still uh, Phoenix Wright versus uh, Professor Layton. Uh, a lot of fans don't consider that to be part of the series, although I did think it was a good game. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that should be mentioned. But yeah. The thing with this one is that it stars Miles Edgeworth, who, you know, many fans will say is, like, better than Phoenix in just about any way, especially as far as his character development goes. And um, the other key thing is that the second game in this two-game collection never came out in the United States. It was never localized. So, yeah, we finally got a chance to uh, try that out. Um, when the original game came out in 2010, um, I gave that game a 3.5. 
Uh, and um, yeah, like I, I pretty much stood by it. Like the main thing that really separated it from the rest of the series, aside from being able to use Edgeworth, uh, was the fact that all of the action was done in third person. You know, you could actually walk around uh, the crime scenes and investigate things one by one there. Whereas in previous games, when you were using Phoenix Wright, Apollo Justice, or whoever it may be, um, it was always through menus. Now, these menus still exist, but, you know, just the ability to, like, walk around and at the same time, like, see the whole, see all of the um, animations definitely added, like, um, a more dynamic feel to the game. And then that's definitely something I appreciate. Um, but, like, as for things that um, I wasn't that fond of, um, you're using Miles Edgeworth, but, and you were, you were a prosecutor, but you never actually prosecuted in court. And I thought, like, that was a huge missed opportunity. Um, just because, like, um, throughout the entire Ace Attorney series, you you are a defense attorney. Um, even, like, one of the games um, allows you to use Miles Edgeworth for a part of the chapter as a defense attorney. And I was like, you know what? I want to be the prosecutor for once. And, like, yeah, this gives you that opportunity, but it doesn't al allow you to do it in court, which, you know, I thought is definitely a miss. Um, that being said, like, um, there's a lot of returning characters here. Uh, the story is uh, definitely awesome. There's five episodes in the first game that are all intertwined by one case that, you know, um, happened like uh, several years ago. And it involves um, uh, international policies, which, you know, you can't try someone in an American court for something they did in Asia and things like that. And it's really all about finding the truth. You know, when you first run into Miles Edgeworth in uh, the original game, he learned a lot from his mentor, Manfred von Karma, who was also notorious for uh, forging evidence. And, you know, that's something that Miles didn't want to do. And, yeah, he becomes, like, an awesome person because of that. And, yeah, the, the first game was really solid, really giving you um, an idea of, like, how he is, how he does his work. But it's really the second game um, that really makes this collection really worth it. Um, but... Uh, I, I, I'd also say a buyer beware there. Uh, the first game, which should take around like 15 to 18 hours, whereas the second game is uh, closer to 30. You know, it, it, it's, it's almost double the length of the original game. And what the original game um, uh, did rough, in my opinion, was the last chapter. The last chapter is easily like over six to eight hours. And I was like, wow, this thing is way long. And in the second game, Pretty much every chapter reaches that length, which which leads to its uh, length. But that being said, as far as the plot devices used in um, Ace Attorney Investigations 2, uh, they definitely raise the stakes a little bit. You know, I don't want to say too much for those who uh, haven't tried it yet or, you know, they want to get into it. But um, there is a case where, you know, it's possible that Miles Edgeworth could lose his prosecutor's badge. Uh, there's a case where you actually use both him and his dad. And like, yeah, if you're familiar with the lore, his dad was a defense attorney who uh, lost his life in an elevator um, and he was actually like murdered by his uh, mentor. You know, I'm, I'm spoiling like the original game, but yeah, that, that, that's pretty, basically what it uh, goes over. So, yeah, uh, definitely an awesome collection. Um, the, the graphics are, are, are definitely uh, spot on for me. Um, the game is uh, on, on PS4, PC and Switch. Um, but, you know, also after playing Emio, um, uh, that for Famicom Detective Club, like I feel like that game does more visually than this one. But you know, being able to run around in third person is cool, and they actually updated all the little graphics there. So all of the chibis are no, are no longer sprite based; they're actually um, hand drawn, and they all look absolutely terrific. They they look just as awesome as their usual close ups do when they're actually uh, uh, interacting with other characters. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a fun one. Just uh, note that. Uh, it is a little on the long side, and I wouldn't recommend that you binge it. Uh, or if you do binge it, you know, binge a game at a time. Don't try to do both at the same time or anywhere along those lines, because, you know, the story can get convoluted and it becomes hard to follow as a result. But yeah, um, another game I've been playing is Paper Ghost Stories Third Eye Open. Uh, this game is also another uh, narrative-based title, and... Um, this one is absolutely beautiful. Like, if you were to pull up any sort of a trailer or footage of this game, um, it pretty much looks like a an active storybook. Um, but the the lighting is also done uh, a very nice way. You know, it's easy to compare the uh, visual style to something like Paper Mario. But you know, Paper Mario uh, has that polished look to it, where everything is like the same. Whereas 
uh, paper ghost stories uh, looks like things were, you know, literally taken out of a book and pasted somewhere else. And I think it really gives it a nice distinctive style. Um, I'm only two chapters into the game so far. There's 11 in the game. And uh, so far you use this uh, little girl who has an imaginary friend, or rather she meets a ghost that no one else sees. So everyone just assumes that she has an imaginary friend. Um, the story uh, and the the narrative is really tied around a lot of um, uh, uh, Southeast Asian concepts, uh, primarily in Malaysia. So a lot of the words are going to be in broken English with some Malaysian mixed in. But it does an interesting thing where all of the pieces of dialogue, whenever you see a little bit of Malaysian or Chinese, they actually describe what those words mean at the bottom. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's very visible and it definitely... Uh, uh, showcases the culture involved in this game and yeah so far it's really just about a girl with a, a very uh strict dad and yeah that's uh, something i also um you know relate to uh being asian american myself so I'm, I'm enjoying that so far but you know let's bring it back to the star of the show chris already talked about it you know um brandon's gonna eventually play it but when he gets there astrobot you know astrobot you know it's 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 amazing so far. Um, it's probably like near the top of my game of the year. My game of the year so far is um, Trails to Daybreak. But yeah, there is no amount of time where Astrobot doesn't make me smile, except for when it gets really hard. Uh, like Chris, I've also uh, completely finished the first two galaxies, along with the bonuses that come with it. Um, the the second galaxy um, unlocks like these. Uh, triangle levels and when i say a triangle i mean like the actual shape like the button on the on the playstation and um these levels remind me of uh the quote-unquote secret levels from super mario sunshine where they're really just platforming challenges you know uh the one that i uh spent uh, the, the most amount of time on was this armadillo challenge where you have to like mm -hmm. you know you knock out the armadillo all of a sudden you turn into a ball and then you're just bouncing on a ball and just like running through um you're running through spikes and all that. And yeah, the, the platforming is tough. Like you're, you're, you're in the universe. You have to avoid all these bad things. You can't, uh, you can't make the wrong move or else you'll die. And yeah, just like to just being able to see all of the different bots that you can unlock, like um, a big thing, especially with uh, Astro's playroom was really, you know, um, celebrating like PlayStation fandom. Whereas this it takes it to the next level. Like you're definitely celebrating PlayStation fandom, but it also extends to, you know, uh, various third party games that also might be more on the PlayStation side. You know, um, it was something that I was unfortunately spoiled on a few days ago, but I've seen bots that were actually uh, Kuryu from Yakuza. I've seen Joker from Persona and um, I haven't unlocked um, Kuryu yet. I think that's, that, that's my next level, but I've, I've, I've unlocked, joker and uh i don't uh like chris i don't have the ability to change costumes yet if that's even a thing but i did see a costume thing that that gets there so basically the way it works is every level has around seven bots to unlock and a couple of those bots usually end up being like um a special well, what they call a vip bot which are typically just uh bots based on like other games and um along with that you have puzzle pieces to collect as well as uh, sometimes you'll find a portal and this portal is um, pretty much just a uh, second way to complete the level and then when you actually find these portals not only do you exit that level but you end up opening up a new world in what's called the lost galaxy which are actually just harder um, levels in the game so uh, that's definitely cool there's a whole lot of uh, things to like for both uh, younger and older players or you know just people who are more experienced and less, uh, less experienced with platform uh, games and um, yeah, um, definitely really enjoying what I'm playing so far. It feels very polished. The music is fantastic. You know, Astro is absolutely cute. Um, being able to see the game parody um, other games has been has been awesome so far. Um, you know, Chris just talked a little bit about God of War, but like, yeah, the the, the special thing with that one is you get to use Kratos' axe in the exact same way that he uses it. Like, you can throw it at people. It'll they'll they'll freeze them. Then you gotta press R two again to just have it come back. And it's like wow, I'm playing like a cutesy version of God of War, and that's something I definitely uh, really appreciate. And there's a whole bunch of other things that tie into it as well. Like in that God of War level, there's these um, the green birds that you might remember from you know the last two God of War games. And um, while you know it's not essential to kill them all, if you do, uh, you you get a trophy for it. So yeah, like nothing in this game feels like a waste of time. Um, if anything, it's really making me want to 
just 100% everything before I move on. Um, the, the main way that I've been playing it is uh, I go through every level within the galaxy and then, you know, I finish them and then I go back to it um, before the galaxy is over. And uh, that's all pretty cool. And But yeah, the, the main reason why like he's collecting these bots and these puzzle pieces is to really, you know, fix up the hub world, which is, which is just the crash site. And it sort of feels like um, Pikmin in a way, because you know you're gonna find all these various obstacles, and the only way to actually move through is to have enough bots to help you. So you'll you'll maybe find something where oh you need 20 bots to form a rope here so you can get over to the other side of the platform, and uh, things like that. So it's really cool, um, just uh, finding ways to uh, fix things up that way. You know, Chris talked about the uh, the the gotcha pawn machine where you can unlock different parts of the setting for the third party characters that you come across in the game. And uh yeah, um it's it's really enjoyable so far. Uh, I can't back to uh, or I can't wait to get back into it when we're done here and um yeah, um we're, we're we're in that part of the year where things are getting crazy. There are two other games that I'm playing that I'm also loving that I can't talk about yet. But you know, we'll get to one of them, you know, uh, next week or the week after. But yeah, that's about it for me. Yeah, the like the only other thing I have to say about Astrobot is, I think it's the the weakest Sony game in a while in terms of setting, uh, yeah, settings and options. Um, mm. There's a lot of great music in this game, and I really wish I could kind of just turn it up without turning everything else up mm. uh, at the same time. Um, the accessibility options are pretty. There's like three of them. It's just like you can use the sticks instead of just the gyro for that stuff. Um, I think there's one more for. Some UI stuff, and then one more for I forget what the third one's for, but yeah, and like the uh, the other options are just minimal stuff. Um, nothing for like audio settings for you know music and sound effects and that kind of stuff. Uh, and there's one particularly great song. It just comes out of nowhere. Uh, it's called Papa Tree, and it's just a <laughs> very stupid song. Yeah. Um, I have the deluxe edition with the soundtrack, and it's like eight and a half minutes long. Oh well, wow. yeah, I, I I've listened to that song too. I actually just played through that level last night, and um, I don't know if if you got the trophy, but you get a trophy for continuing to spray him in the face, and um, the trophy is called like "What's He Saying?" And at the same time, it's like I don't understand a word uh, of what that tree is saying, but it's definitely a pretty pretty funky song to have in there and you know it's 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 funny you bring up a lot of the accessibility issues you know um a lot of other publications talking about astrobot have talked about how this is pretty much a nintendo game not made by nintendo but like yeah when you think about you know the polish and just how mm. fun it is but at the same time talk about the lack of accessibility issues yeah that's nintendo yeah <laughs> um no way to remap buttons or stuff like that yeah uh, Things that could use, um, I think the. It seems like there are some people having save issues if their system crashes, because uh, it doesn't save the way you think it would. Um, so yeah, when you're done with the game, uh, it's best to kind of just go out to the menus and then close it from the dashboard. Uh, versus you know, other ways, just assuming it's been saving. Um, cool. That's the the other thing. I I assume they'll fix that up. Uh, make it better, but uh, yeah, for now it's a it's a really good package. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get to some news. Uh, yeah. First up here, uh, new time for some Game Pass stuff, uh, and Ooh. yeah, we're kind of in a, a weird slow time. So, uh, what's available now? Let's see, Star Trekker. I mentioned that earlier uh, for console and PC. There's also Age of Mythology retold. There's on PC and uh, Xbox Series X and S. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's you know basically a RTS strategy game. So yep, um, made a bit better though. I saw some people were annoyed that one of the DLCs is just a bunch of avatars mm. for the game, um, like pictures, not actual game content. Um, so yeah, that's a weird thing. Um, let's see. Also available now, Expeditions a Mud Runner game. Uh, so that's their new kind of a scientific expedition kind of game mm-hmm. uh similar to what mud runner and snow runner were but you're not really delivering stuff so much um just trying to get to places to do research missions and set up camp and do all that kind of stuff so uh that looks neat i'll probably check that one out this week 
Uh, also coming, let's see, coming up, yeah, September 11th, the Riders Republic Ooh. for console and PC. That's the multiplayer sports game that Ubisoft made a couple years ago. Uh, that kind of came and went. And then, uh, let's see, for the 17th, Train Sim World 5 for console and PC, another Train Sim game. So, uh, there's more of that to check out. So, there you go. Uh, some decent stuff there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's it. Uh, for news, we got a new No Man's Sky update. Yep. Uh, following up the the one that just came out a few weeks ago. Um, but it seems part of that as it's called Aquarius. And the main thing it's adding is fishing. Uh, they've added fishing to the game uh, so that you can catch fish. It's not necessarily, it seems like it's a bespoke mode versus um, uh, you catching like the the various aquatic uh, creatures you see in your water. Uh, it seems like they have bespoke fish that can be caught. Um, yeah, I thought they had a name for me. Yeah, here they are. A reef eel, jungle red fin, marrow shark, fields, dart fish, and a caustic urchin are the ones that are mentioned here. There might be others as well, but it's a lot of that kind of stuff, and it's kind of funny seeing some of the, the shots of this because the, the fishing... Uh, rod is like three times as tall as the the people. Uh, it's very very silly, but uh, you get an exo skiff that you can use to go out into the water uh, a little further out mm-hmm. uh, for that stuff. Um, it also has its own cold storage inventory uh, for that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's rare catches. You got a fishing log you're trying to complete uh, with the need for specialist baits and legendary fish to catch. So uh-huh. Uh, there's all that kind of stuff for the game as well as some messages in bottles it seems so yeah they're doing a lot of uh weird stuff there's also automated fish traps you can leave out there's uh an aquarius expedition uh that's a, a big quest to go catch fish across the galaxy uh so that's cool uh-huh. uh, more cooking recipes yeah bespoke fishing records uh screen uh, which seems to show uh, Sean's username here. Don Marie's username is Sean Poopy Pants. Mm-hmm. It's for these screenshots. Uh, that's weird, but okay. As uh, a deep sea diving suit. Yeah, a bunch of different uh, rigs uh, for the uh, the fishing rods. Mm. Yeah, posters, new technical figurine to put in your ship, uh, mm. flight pack stuff, and a bunch of other things like that. So. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Mm. Kind of adding a whole big part of this game to it. So there you go. Mm. Uh, yeah, let me get to the. This is the biggest news of the week uh, that Sony announced on Monday that they were shutting down Concord this past Friday. Mm. Uh, Going to re- uh, refund it everybody, uh, at least everybody that bought digitally. Uh, people that bought retail copies, you know, had to go through their their retailer of choice. Mm. Uh, though anybody that did that through PlayStation Direct also getting a, a refund automatically and deciding to kind of uh, react to the game's kind of uh, poor start uh, to just shut it down is a, a weird way to go. Kind of makes me wonder mm. if they had seen like the pre order numbers after the betas and like were actually thinking to put it on like PlayStation Plus to kind of get it out there in front of more people um maybe get word of mouth going that way um like a lot of people expected that once they didn't do that for launch they might do that for october uh, Mm -hmm. when they when the first season would be starting uh kind of just keep it going for a bit to get to that point and once the uh the seasonal stuff was kind of going to go uh you know get more people in there so that the you know Word of mouth could be more positive than it has been, oh. um, but unfortunately, like none of that stuff seemed to happen. Uh, they do mention here. Um, let's see. We would, while we determine the best path ahead, Concord sales will cease immediately. We we'll begin to offer a full refund for all gamers to purchase the game for PS5 or PC. Um, yeah, we'll keep you updated. Thank you all again f- to all the free gunners who joined us in the Concord Galaxy. Kind of. Uh, we determine the best path ahead that kind of makes it seem like 
they may be trying to see if they can rework this game a bit, maybe um, do another pass on character design and art style and all that, so rethink all that stuff and see uh, what maybe a free-to-play version of this would look like. Um, but I don't know. I don't know that I have that kind of expectation for this. Um, mm-hmm. At this point, it kind of seems like the the well's been poisoned. Um, I don't know how long it would take to rework this into like a completely different IP, um, just an, an, a different universe, essentially, because this one is tainted at this point by negative reception. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's sad. I feel for the dead. I also feel for all the people that enjoyed it uh, for as mm-hmm. few as they were. But yeah. <sighs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's um, it, it, it's definitely a rough situation all around. I mean, like you know, uh, Chris also you know played it, and you know, um, out of what you've played so far, Chris, like you don't think it's a bad game, right? No, I would would have said if it would have kept going, I would maybe have it on my game of the year list, maybe. But obviously, at two weeks, it's kind of very hard to have played enough to have it stand up to other games. But yeah. yeah. From from what I've played too, I don't think it's a bad game at all. In fact, like it's actually a really good as far as its shooting. It's it, it definitely feels well polished. Uh, the the strategies are there if you know how to you know uh, navigate your way through hero shooters. And like for for what it's worth, like with the time that I spent playing it, it was really fun. Um, and like a lot of the problems that I have with like what happened here don't really stem from anything that the developers really did. Um, like, you know, when, when we go back to when it was unveiled at that state of play, you know, what the, the, the main complaints were the fact that, oh, they, they look like bargain guardians of the galaxy. Well, I mean, like, that's not really like anyone's problem, but yeah, I can, I can definitely understand why it would make people not want to play it. Um, my critique when it was first unveiled was that when it was first shown, I thought it would actually be a, you know, a single player, uh, campaign shooter. Uh, obviously that's not what it turned out to be. And if, like, there was any sort of pivot that Sony or Firewalk could have made, it would have been to, like, really look at, you know, a lot of the feedback from that point of view. You know, I know that there's a lot of people complaining about, you know, the uh, diversity and, like, you know, DI stuff, like, the way it goes on. I'm, 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 I'm not even going to address that. But, like, you know, my issue is just, like, the way things were communicated with this game. You know, even going back to the beta, you know, which happened, uh, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, the beta didn't get the numbers that people were looking for, and I think one of the biggest reasons why was because it also uh, launched alongside uh, the beta for Marvel Rivals. And Marvel Rivals is getting like great reviews up and down. You know, um, everyone's calling it, you know, the the next Overwatch, which is obviously what you know this game is uh, trying to be. And um, like, yeah, it's just been rough. And instead of like continuing to work on it some more, uh, Sony went ahead and released it. And, you know, we've seen it in um, Gamescom. Like, they're going to be on that new Amazon show, and they've announced that they're not going to cancel that episode. Mm. Um, They made a whole controller for it. And then, yeah, like, you know, just go back to last year. Uh, Sony spent, you know, a lot of money to acquire this developer, and this was the game that they were working on for the last eight years, which, you know, eight years ago was also when Overwatch came out. So, you know, it's it's, it's tough to really see, like, who to blame here. Um, But, like, the main thing is, like, this kind of thing is really surprising. You know, we, we, we've seen a lot of games like, you know, fail out the gate, you know, the most recent, I mean, in, in my opinion, being um, uh, Suicide Squad Kill Justice League, right? You know, people were complaining just about for, uh, for, for about everything there. And this game didn't even last 12 days. So, um, yeah, like <clears throat> you would hope that, you know, Sony or, you know, PlayStation is going to try to figure out how to retool everything, but you know, as as Chris mentioned, like I feel for the devs. I don't see a situation in which um, a lot of these people keep their jobs, and obviously that's been a problem for the last you know year, year and a half now. And um, yeah, like it's 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 just it's just tough to see uh, where to go from here. Like um, the fact that they've already you know refunded everyone to the best of their ability, and you know pretty much recalled it in all uh, physical spaces is just absolutely surprising because this is something that you don't see like. Again, like PlayStation put millions of dollars into this. They even made made a controller, which means this was supposed to be a big deal. 
And if this doesn't come back as Concord, what what does it come back come back as? And I don't know. It's just weird to see, and it's it's wild, just considering the fact that you know Sony is admitting that they 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 lost a lot of money. But like you know, what do you do from there? And if they get rid of the staff, that wouldn't be surprising. And if they if they didn't, that also would be surprising. So it's 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 a weird situation to be. Yeah, it's uh, it's a weird situation. Um, I imagine they're not going to worry about the the jobs for the time being. Um, uh-huh. Just kind of have everybody working on uh, what the next step would be, whether it's, you know, a new project they might have that they could pitch um, or just some new version of Concord, whatever it could be. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the, the jobs will be fine for the time being, because this is all PlayStation management's issue Mm -hmm. at the devs. Um, So yeah, I think we'll just kind of see them go quiet for a while. Mm -hmm. And, Astrobot kind of comes out at the right time to kind of make this a, a non-issue for uh, the time being. Mm-hmm. Uh, as uh, they got a big new shiny thing for people to check out. So there you go on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Level 5 Vision 2024 is happening in a few weeks here uh, on September 24th. Mm. Uh, technical Level 5 Vision 2024 to the world's children. Uh, as their new events, uh, they are expected to announce some new stuff. Uh, though I would say maybe they should announce that they have finished games. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's been their big issue so far in this this relaunch of their development. Um, seems like they will probably have a, na- uh, a date for Inazuma 11 Victory Road. Because uh, they've been doing some beta stuff on Switch and PlayStation and PC for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that very well be something that they get out uh we know fantasy life i the girl who steals time was mm-hmm. delayed uh from coming out october 10th to an unannounced date mm-hmm. and then, then they also have a deck of police and professor Layton in the new world of steam that are also in the works um the latter of which is uh on a nintendo published or i think it's primarily going to be on nintendo's platform so that's probably going to be waiting on mm-hmm. uh whenever Nintendo's ready for them to announce a date, but they do suppose they have another game uh, in the works. So we'll see how that stuff goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Though I know they did put out a game uh, recently. Let me see if I can figure out which one it was. It was a mech game. Um, Let's see. Uh, Okay. Then it's not on here. Okay. Uh, But yeah, they did have a a game that uh, came out a while ago. the fact that I can't find it. Megaton Musashi, Musashi Wired. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that came out a while ago. Mm. Obviously, it was not a big deal. So probably not one that keeps them uh, afloat for a while, but these other ones probably do better for them. Mm. Uh, but yeah, hopefully they got uh, uh, some dates that they can actually hit here uh, for this event. So yeah, there you go. Uh, and speaking of Games needing a date. R Type Tactics 1 and 2 Cosmos has been delayed again. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been delayed to 2025 from supposedly being out later this year. Uh, so Granzella is kind of holding that back again. Uh, that's for PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC uh, at some point. So hopefully that hits because that was a pretty neat game on the PSP uh, or Terra Games. Uh, so hopefully they get this one right. Uh, uh, for all these consoles, so yeah, there you go. Oh. Uh, but yeah, let's get to some in uh industry news. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had another game that was supposed to be out here, it's out next week, uh, for Xbox that has been delayed mm-hmm. uh, because of this continued issue that's been popping up lately, uh, for developers that uh cannot get the uh, the backend systems working, um, particularly when it comes to like creating pages for their games and getting the developer accounts all set up and all that stuff that you need to uh, get set up on the back end to actually release a game. Uh, the developers of Hack, H A A K, mm. on uh, Steam uh, basically said they were working on the game for Xbox for a good 14 months and could not get a hold of. Uh, a Microsoft employee that could reliably help them fix their issue. Uh, 
Uh, and I think in the process they uh, shut down, so there's no nobody there to really release the game. Uh, they were also working on the PlayStation version, but just kind of ran out of time and money for that stuff, so uh, that kind of very much backfired for them. And then this one involves Inotria, the last song, a Souls-like oh. um, set in yeah Italy, based around Italian folklore. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's out uh, the 15th or the 17th, 17th. Mm. Uh, so just over a week uh, from now. Uh, that will be coming out on time for PlayStation and uh, PlayStation 5 and PC. Mm. Uh, but the Xbox version has been indefinitely delayed. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, over the platform submission process for uh, what the developer calls a lack of communication from Microsoft about getting the issues fixed uh, that has caused them to miss their, their release dates that they were planning on. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the CEO of Giama Games says here, uh, we've uh, we've got Xbox Series X and S versions ready. We can't proceed with submission and release. I spent a lot of money for reporting, and they decided to ignore us. Mm. Um, yeah, but it seems like Microsoft has finally gotten a hold of them after being radio silent, so that's good. Uh, though it shouldn't require them to get get on social media uh, and talk to you know people uh, in the games media to get this. Uh, get their issues noted, but mm-hmm. you know, something's going on on this back end for smaller devs that uh, is causing these kind of issues. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is an internal problem that we shouldn't even know about. So the fact that, you know, uh, JAMA is, you know, complaining to games media about it shows that this is definitely a weakness at Xbox that we always thought was a problem. And now that we know that it is, it's just weird to see. Like, you know, if I was Xbox, I would definitely be listening to as many people as possible in regards to getting games on my platform. Mm. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter, like, what kind of game it is or how good or bad it is. You want to have games on your platform as possible. And if you're not doing your job and making sure those pages are available, it's, it's, it's stupid. The fact that, you know, Pill Spencer had to go up and talk about it is embarrassing. And, you know, if, if I was working in that department, um yeah i'd be ashamed too so like this is dumb uh hopefully they fix it soon and um yeah if if jama went ahead and like talked about it i'm sure it's an issue for plenty of other developers and it's pretty lame to see um and yeah um enotria is a game that you know i tried out at summer game fest it's not my cup of tea it's pure on pure on soulsborne kind of stuff but um Mm -hmm. yeah i'm sure that the xbox uh audience would definitely welcome it but you know if it's going to be delayed because of this kind of thing then they got to look from within and fix it yeah that seems to be kind of the issues. These are kind of bugs and issues that have been in their system for a long time that mm-hmm. they've been able to kind of get around by just um, putting a bunch of people on it. But it seems like lately they have been having less of those people uh, to get a hold of devs and uh, work them through their issues. That has just been causing uh, a number of developers issues. Of late, mm-hmm. so uh, that's uh, disappointing to see, but also makes you wonder how much of their attention is on this kind of stuff. Do mm-hmm. you think they'd have a lot of people working on dev accounts and making sure they have as good of an experience as possible? And obviously, we're not seeing that many games getting uh, delayed on Xbox, but maybe the ones that aren't even getting announced on Xbox are because of that stuff as well. Mm. Uh, as uh, this Capcom news came out, uh, that they are finally bringing the uh, two Capcom collections, the Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics, Capcom Fighting Collection 2 over to Xbox for next year, uh, which are going to be on the Xbox One versions. Uh-huh. Um, it seems like this was largely due to some sort of similar uh, tech issue as they mentioned in this announcement, we are excited to announce that after technical discussions with our partners at Microsoft, uh, these two games will be releasing on Xbox One. Uh, Both Xbox One versions arrive in 2025, so please stay tuned for more information, uh, which seems like technical discussions. Interesting way to frame it. Mm. Um, I've seen people suggest it's related to the MT framework, so um, I don't know how that necessarily 
makes it a big issue, but uh, they definitely seem to have some sort of uh, concern there that Microsoft was not addressing, at least at the point that they were announcing these games. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it does kind of make the make them look like the Xbox versions are lesser versions and to a degree they are because they are not going to be there at launch Mm -hmm. Uh, for either of these. The uh, the Marvel vs. Capcom collection is out this week on the 12th uh, on uh, Switch, PC, and PlayStation 4. Uh, And the Fighting Collection 2 is out on PS4, Switch, and PC uh, next year. Uh, There will not no idea if the Xbox version will be able to catch up and be ready on time or not, but yeah, mm-hmm. uh, just some more issues. And if Capcom is having issues on Xbox with whatever this mm-hmm. technicality is, uh, that's not a great sign. It seems. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I mean, these games should have been announced on Xbox when they were announced. Like, you know, the fact that they were showing up on a Nintendo direct when, you know, the switch is not known for any good net code. And, you know, it's coming to PlayStation and not Xbox is just a bad look. And, um, yeah, you know, again, hopefully they try to figure out these things because they shouldn't be happening. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, was, you know, speaking of games not coming to Xbox, there's Black Myth Wukong. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I believe is supposed to be coming at some point, but for now is PS5 and PC at the moment. Uh, yep. It seems like it has surpassed 18 million sales. Uh, mm-hmm. In just over two weeks, yeah, uh, it looks like their biggest game yet for the uh, for PC and PS5. It's one of their biggest ones for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, for this, uh, they are expecting to put out an expansion as they are starting to work on that. Now that it's done so well, so mm-hmm. good on them. So yeah, it's also not great because uh, the developers are well known to have a shitty toxic work culture so yep uh that's been the the one sour notes though which causes yeah. people to be like well how can those be issues of it you know the, the pushback like how going to be pushback if it sold 18 million it's like it doesn't mean it affects the sales it just means yeah. there's plenty of people talking about it that won't buy the game or check it out yeah but yeah yeah um that being said like uh you know 18 million is definitely nothing to sneeze at. Um, at the same time, um, I believe a, a majority of their sales is in China. And that's yep. actually a huge, huge deal, too, because um, they don't buy a lot of games there. So, you know, we in, in, in the business side of things, they always talk about, you know, taking over the Chinese market. And um, nobody has really been able to do it. Um, and the funny thing is, we're seeing a lot of um, Chinese companies find success elsewhere. So the yeah. fact that, you know, we have a Chinese company actually be successful in China on top of, you know, getting like the reviews that they're getting and the sell that they're getting elsewhere is pretty mm-hmm. good. Uh, that being said, yeah, the, 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 the toxic workplace stuff, it's, yeah, it's, it's just slippery slope. So. Yeah. So I think it was like 80 to 90% of the sales were out of China, which is yeah. wild. Yeah. Well, you have to understand is that the vast majority, and I really do mean the vast majority of the video game industry in China is predominantly uh, mobile phone games and not the good ones. Yeah. yeah. Like that being said, like this is a $60, $70 game. So I think that makes it all the more impressive. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, there was those weirdly draconian rules they had about people streaming with the game that... Yeah, for particular influencers, not necessarily streamers or reviewers. Mm -hmm. um, I was just like, yeah, this seems like it maybe comes out of uh, rules you might get in China, but out in the the West, it was like a lot of French and uh, European people that were getting this. Yeah. Which makes me think, uh, I have the suspicion that someone high up in that company has party ties or is getting funding from the party itself, which makes me think that there's this, you know, these these uh, rules that go along with it. So, you know, um, that's the rumor anyway. 
but yeah, that's not me trying to sound sinister or anything. It's just if you do business in China and you're Chinese, there's like a six to one chance that you're probably in some way related to the party somehow. But yeah, um, you know, on the one hand, yeah, I am glad that Chinese developers are like actually becoming a major part of the industry now. Um, and it's not all just Mahoyo, <laughs> which, I mean, that's not an insult to them. It's just they pretty much dominated it for years at this point. But just wish it wasn't these guys because they're kind of assholes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that news. Let's see. Next up here. Yeah, as I mentioned, PlayStation is starting their 30 year celebration. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been, uh, yeah, the PS1 launched in Japan, I think September 9th or mm. September 1990, uh, 1994. So mm. uh, they have been around for quite a while. Um, They're starting their celebration partly with Astrobot being kind of the a big part of that. Mm-hmm. Has, uh, that has a ton of references and uh, bots and such from various properties. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they did announce uh, a bunch of other stuff they're working on. Uh, this is not everything, but uh, this is uh, the stuff they're announcing right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. There's uh, my first GT. Uh, this holiday, I look forward to a free trial version designed to attract diverse players of all skill levels to the globally acclaimed Gran Turismo 7. This upcoming release will include some of the favorite cars, tracks, and race events that evoke the nostalgia and excitement of the very first GT experience. Mm. Look out for more details on my first GT, available to all PS5 and PS4 players this holiday. Mm. Uh, so that could be cool. Um, I imagine that would mean that they would get cars and tracks and such that were in the original game. Mm-hmm. as sort of a trial thing, uh, which could be pretty cool. Especially if they could find a way to uh, get like a PS1 filter over the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of make it look like that, but uh, we'll see more about that later this year. Um, oh. They're putting up a bunch more games on uh, very streaming se- uh, yeah, sa- uh, platforms oh. uh, in a collaboration with Sony Music. Each month from October through January, released for the first time on Spotify, a set of digital soundtracks from fan favorite PlayStation franchises. Oh. Uh, you'll also be able to uh, stream them from Spotify or purchase them on various other music storefronts. Oh. Uh, so that'll be cool. Uh, the ones mentioned here, uh, God of War 1 and 2 and Ghost of Sparta, Twisted Metal, Starhawk, and Unit 13. Oh. Uh, so a weird little mix of games there, but oh. that'd be cool. Uh, they also have a special curated PlayStation 30th anniversary playlist on Spotify, so you can check oh. that out. Um, let's see, Shapes of Play they announced. A new collection of uh, products. Uh, I don't, these things look weird, but uh, there's Shapes of Play Battle, oh. uh, which is like Go style uh, pieces oh. in the shape of the PlayStation. Uh, icons, the square, triangle, circle, X mm-hmm. uh, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, we can challenge a friend to line up four different shapes of the same color on the board to win. Yeah, that's a version of Go. Uh, mm-hmm. So there's that. Uh, shapes of play create. Uh, these are kind of uh, a bunch of magnetic blocks that you can put together to make various shapes. And I assume also the, uh, uh, the face buttons uh, for that. And there's mm-hmm. shapes of play recharge. Uh, uh, these look like like squeeze balls, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the various shapes of the the controller is a triangle. Yeah, one's a cube, a sphere, a, a triangular prism, and a, it's kind of like a little X uh, fuzzy thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's neat. But also, I think it's. I want to say I saw the prices are pretty expensive for those things, so mm-hmm. I don't know if those would be ones to get just on the on a whim. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see if they got the yeah seven ninety nine or seventy nine ninety nine for the the great one. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the prices at here? Mm-hmm. Uh, Forty four ninety nine mm-hmm. for the the battle one, the go board. That's a four by four board you get as well. Um, and recharge is thirty four ninety 
So that's uh, pretty expensive for that. Uh, what else is mentioned here? They're going to be doing a free online multiplayer weekend in esports tournaments mm-hmm. on the, the weekend of September 21st and 22nd. Yeah. Uh, so you can play your multiplayer games for free there without PS Plus. Mm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they say they'll have some more stuff going on here for that later this year. So we'll see if there's some more interesting stuff. But mm. yeah, nothing too huge there, but some neat stuff either way. Mm. Uh, but yeah, let's get to our next one here. Oppo Games, the, the makers of Risk of Rain 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, seem to essentially be done uh, as they have announced that they have uh, or many of their people have been hired by Valve mm-hmm. uh, so they can work on something working as they say just they'll be working on game development mm-hmm. at Valve uh, so who knows what uh, what sort of project they might be working on or uh, anything but seems like it's enough for them to Kind of cancel the game they were working on. That was Project Codename Snail. Mm-hmm. And kind of put the, the company in limbo for the time being. Yeah. Uh, which is a shame, but hopefully they get to make something cool over at Valve. Because mm-hmm. uh, I forget what the, the other developer that... Um, I think it was the people that made Firewatch. Uh, had their studio get acquired by Valve. And they're like, oh, we're going to still make cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then... That never happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it Campo Santo? I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, in the Valley of Gods, uh, which has been on hold since 2019, and I assume yeah. will never happen again. Because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, had a head writer that went to work on Half Life Alex. Um, and they've just been working on Valve stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they might end up just. Being part of the co- the the machine at Valve, which if that's what they want to do, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Risk of Rain is now under control of uh, Gearbox, uh, with gear with uh, the second game getting PS5 and Xbox Series X and S uh, versions recently. That seems like uh, are in a bit of rush shape uh, yeah. with the update they put out and the new expansion. That seem to be pretty buggy mm-hmm. in ways that got people annoyed. Uh, so that part of their their past is uh, not in great shape, but hopefully the devs are okay. Uh, but yeah, we got some uh, bad news here. Uh, the developers of the Until Dawn remake, Ballistic Moon, have announced uh, layoffs here. Uh, let's see. They have confirmed a number of employees have been laid off. Um, they had a post on LinkedIn. They struggled to navigate the complex challenges faced in the game industry, saying we at Ballistic Moon are confronted with some difficult reality realities. Uh, it is with deep red and heavy heart that we must make tough decisions to significantly scale down our team to secure the future of the studio. It comes after a development of Until Dawn for PS5 and PS4 or PS5 and PC. Uh, we want to express our sincere gratitude to every team member for the hard work, dedication, and unwavering commitment to Ballistic Moon. Uh, so yeah, they're still focused on supporting the launch of Until Dawn and working on whatever's next. Um, I believe I've read that they've been having problems getting funding for the next project they were wanting to work on. Uh, and as we know, kind of the the landscape right now for funding for games is not great at all, especially if you're an independent studio, which Ballistic Moon is. Uh, so yeah. once you do finish a, a project like Until Dawn, you're kind of at the whim of whatever your next project is going to be. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that is still kind of in limbo enough that they have had to make the decision to lay people off for the time being until they, they have funding and the, the project secured for their next, uh, next couple of years, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, sad news for them there. Um, and yeah, our last one here, rock steady is laying off people. Yep. Uh, took a while for that as people, Knew that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League did not do that well. Uh, um, on Monday, they uh, their QA team was effectively cut in half from 33 to 15. Other departments were affected, though at the time uh, that this was coming out, so the, the total number is unclear. 
uh, Junior and Tendered stuff from Windows Let Go, so just kind of um, pulling a lot of uh, uh, people there uh, mm-hmm. just to trim the payroll, I guess, wages for the time being mm. until they have something else in the works for WB. Because, mm. um, yeah, just supporting Suicide Squad for the for the year of content that they have promised is does not require the full team. Mm-hmm. And also, that is the uh, some sad news here, but uh, mm. I think they'll ultimately be okay because Rocksteady is a a good team there, but they need a a project that kind of really gets people excited. Mm-hmm. Suicide, Squad, Suicide Squad was one that, from the time it was being announced, had pretty much negative uh, reception about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody really giving it the benefit of the doubt, and Cause them to have to delay the game further to kind of keep reworking it as best they could before they had to put it out and kind of just mm-hmm. uh, be done with it. So yeah, there you go. Some mm-hmm. uh, some sad news there, but we're just now getting to the holiday season, and that's going to be happening more and more, I assume. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, I think that is going to do it here for the show this week. Uh, thank you to Brandon Danner for joining. Always. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, plenty of more stuff to talk about. Mm-hmm. I think we'll get uh, more uh, time with AstroBots uh, in there, so we'll have mm-hmm. some more to talk about that. Uh, I'm trying to see what other stuff is coming out this week. Uh, let me see. There we go. Uh, this week has, let's see, yeah, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine is out this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's that. There's Elsie, nice little indie game uh, for PS5, Switch, and PC. There's Elder Scrolls Castles is finally officially out, mm-hmm. uh, despite it being on Android uh, like two mm-hmm. years ago. I played it and was like, I kind of see what they're going for. They're trying to make Fallout Shelter for Elder Scrolls, and it mm-hmm. doesn't work. Or at least it didn't. It didn't have a hook to it like Fallout Shelter did. Mm-hmm. But maybe that's changed. Uh, who knows? Uh, Satisfactory hits 1.0 here on the 10th. Mm. Uh, so that'll be cool. Uh, Yars Rising is finally out on the 10th. Mm. The Crossy Road Castle is out on the 11th. Uh, Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince is out on PC and mobile. Mm. Uh, Caravan Sandwich is out on PS5, Switch, and PC. Mm. Uh, Fabledom is out PS5, Xbox, and Switch. Uh, Grapple Dogs Cosmic Canines is out on Xbox, Switch, and PC. Uh, let's see, Lollipop Chainsaw Repop. No, that's the... Oh, no, yeah, that was pushed up uh, to Ooh. the 12th. Uh, so that's out. Uh, let's see, yeah, the Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics is out this week. Uh-huh. Uh, Pico Park 2 is out this week on uh, Xbox and PC. Uh, let's see, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown for PS5, Xbox, and PC. That seems like it's been a disaster for the early access stuff. Because uh, apparently their servers just haven't been working much, if at all, mm. uh, for the people that have paid more money to play it early. Mm. Which seems like a bad situation to be in. Uh, which makes sense when I tried to play the demo during the Steam Next Fest and the servers were down. Uh, were mm. unplayable, so... In fact, the full game that people are actively paying for isn't working is real bad. Mm. Uh, let's see. UFL is supposed to be out, that free-to-play soccer game. Yeah. PS5 and the Xbox is out this week on the 12th, and Wild Bastards is also out. Mm. Uh, let's see. Funko Fusion's out for the for the people excited to spend $50 on that. Mm. Uh, and that seems like mostly it, so yeah bunch of stuff uh but yeah that's uh it's gonna be it uh yeah if you enjoy the show for let friends and family know they should check out the the podcast and uh select strangers who are also um excited about some of these games mm-hmm. coming out finally as uh the the big fall season is continuing a mm. uh, bunch of games coming out here this month so yeah we'll see uh see more of that stuff but uh yeah thank you all for tuning in hope you have a good week ahead We will see you all next time. Have a good one.